מאוד מאוד
morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Let us wait for uh, two more minutes and then we'll get started. Okay, let's get started. Uh, any new joiners today? Like especially for Power BI? Uh, online participants, any new joiners in this group today? Okay, C1. Okay, so fine. Uh, let's get started. Probably others would be joining in the middle. 
Um, so I would like to hear from you uh, before we start this session. Uh, today, it's going to be more like an orientation about this uh, Power BI and uh, what, what kind of benefits we have. Uh, what is Power BI, right? So what all we can do with Power BI? So these kind of things let's uh, discuss today. Before we proceed to the session, I would like to hear from you. What is that you know about Power BI? Anyone in this group, what is that you know about Power BI? So it's a visualization tool. Right, it's a visualization tool, perfect. What else? We can see the data in different formats like graphs, pie charts with the help of Power BI, so that we can get some idea regarding the data. We need to take any business steps. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Others, any idea about Power BI? We can use live data to interpret, uh, to transfer in required format. Uh, we can use live data. That is another advantage we have. Okay, what else? Okay, so let me take you through what is Power BI and uh, what all we can do with it, okay? Um, before that, let me show you this course outline as well. There are a few new, you know, new joiners uh, for today's session. Um, this is uh, Power BI training and we are just done with SQL. And I understand a couple of uh, sessions are still to be completed for SQL. I'll, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's have these sessions the last, two sessions of SQL in this week or over the coming uh, uh, weekend. We'll let you know the schedule for those last two sessions. And I hope all of you have practiced those sub-queries, joins and all. So today onwards, we'll start uh, Power BI. Majority of the concepts in SQL we are done with uh, to build the data model. We are good with them, okay? So let us take a look at uh, what all we are going to learn as part of this uh, Power BI training session. We understand what is BI what is business intelligence and why it is needed uh, for any, any business, okay? Uh, history of Power BI, the benefits, okay? the components that are available in Power BI. And we also cover how to uh, install Power BI desktop. Uh, you know, how to create a simple report and the different steps that are involved in uh, creating any kind of a report in Power BI. So we'll, we'll discuss those points. With that, we'll get some you know, better understanding about what is Power BI and how can we download it? How can we start using it, right? Uh, one of the interesting things is uh, Power BI is a, a free tool as a single user. You don't need to uh, pay any license fee. But if you want to implement the same thing in an organization with uh, sharing capabilities, then uh, you would need to go for a pro license or a PPU, uh, premium per user subscription model, or a, or a, you know, a dedicated uh, on-premises reporting server. So we'll also talk about the licenses, okay, the different license types that are available. Um, so three types of licenses are available. We'll, we'll take you through what all different licenses we can get. So once the installation is done, then the next step is to start building the reports. In this process, we understand how to get the data from different sources. Power BI is kind of a tool that accepts hundreds of data sources. You know, you name anything that is uh, as a default connector available or 
if it is not available as a default connector, at least that is, you know, that can be downloaded and that can be used. Something like if I want to connect to a source, uh, some, you know, like Excel, Excel as a source, right? Excel has some data. If I want to visualize it with Power BI, it's very easy because uh, Excel is one of the default connectors available in Power BI. We can simply open it, you know, open Power BI and connect to Excel and load the data into Power BI and start creating the visuals. But if any, any of the data sources are by default not present in Power BI, we can download that connector and we can we can still use it. The so first step, right after the you know installation, we'll start creating the reports by getting the data from different sources. We talk about a good number of examples in this one. Uh, we also understand what is Power Query, what is the role of Power Query in Power BI, right? This is the one we use it for the data transformation activity. Something like the data may not come in the correct format always. What is that we do with the help of Power Query? We clean the data, we transform the data, and we get that one into the required shape. Then we load that one into Power BI, okay? So Power Query, uh, initially it was introduced in Excel itself. However, later Power Query, you know, Power View, Power Pivot, Right, all these things together. Now we have Power BI as a tool. Okay, very uh, powerful uh, uh, querying uh, language. This uses a language called mQuery language. We'll try to understand the fundamentals of mQuery and how to read mQuery language, and then how to create reports or, or how to clean the data and create reports with the help of Power BI. That is what we will learn in this process. We interact with different data sources. So many examples are there. Uh, this material package will be shared with you there. You got like a good number of sample data sets and we'll be working with all of them to get uh, some understanding about how the real time tricky situations would be and how we can uh, get a solution uh, using uh, the different techniques in Power Query. So that is what we will do. And once the data is transformed and uh, available for reporting. The next step, what we need to do is uh, to build our data model. Data modeling is a very common concept across any kind of a visualization tool you take, be it uh, Tableau or ClickView or Power BI or Google Studio, whatever it is, the data modeling, you know, this is a common thing. And data model plays a very crucial role uh, while presenting the data. If your data model is incorrect. All the numbers that you see in the report, you know, are incorrect. Your data may be correct, but if you build a, an incorrect data model, as a result, you will see incorrect numbers in the output. We'll also discuss those things, how your data model can influence your numbers and how, or how they can go wrong. Right, though the data is correct, but your data model is incorrect, and how your numbers will go wrong. We'll talk about those things as well. the most common uh, real time situations wherein uh, we find the numbers incorrectly. However, the data looks looks okay. Data looks okay, but the numbers that are presented in the report or in the Power BI dashboard, they may be incorrect because of your data modeling. This data modeling concept sounds very, very easy for the ones who are already aware of these primary keys, foreign keys, joins, one to many, many to one, these kind of joins. But someone who joined Power BI directly, you will have to invest a little more time. Of course, the session is common for all of us, uh, but the thing is that you may be finding these keys and constraints related concepts uh, are a little new for you. Um, but others who have completed SQL, you will definitely have a fair understanding about uh, what is a join, what is a primary key, what is a foreign key, and how these tables can be joined together. So here in Power BI, in data model, we create the relationships. And these things look very much similar like our joins only a primary key with foreign key we join, right? That's a, that, that looks like a relationship here. We'll talk about how the relationships work. And uh, as part of the data modeling, we also discuss a few more 
uh, topics like uh, if a column is not needed to be displayed, okay, in the final report, right, in the report view, how to hide them, how to hide the tables, how to create the hierarchies, how to perform the sorting and formatting, so many things are there. We spend so much time on data modeling because uh, as discussed already, it is a very, very important component when we uh, start building our reports. If the data model is incorrect, then obviously uh, rest everything that you see on the report will also go incorrect. And we'll also create a few calculated columns uh, using the M language. M language is mashup language. Uh, it's a proprietary language of uh, Microsoft, okay? It is, this is used in Power Query, right? And we create columns, additional columns, calculated columns, we can, we can call that. Create uh, date dimensions and, uh, you know, the different kind of uh, data models uh, will, will go through and there you will understand uh, how to build a very effective data model, right? The reports usually fail because of uh, uh, the data models only. Uh, sometimes if you do not build an effective data model, your report may be showing the correct numbers, but uh, uh, it runs very slow. Every filter that you apply, it will take uh, two to three minutes to produce that number, right? So how to deal with those kind of situations, we'll, we'll see. Um, so once the models are ready, then the next step is to start creating the visualizations, right? There are so many visual types available. Interesting thing is, uh, a few visuals, even though they are not present as part of Power BI desktop application, you can download them as custom visuals. There is a, a small uh, store area, right? You can just uh, connect to that and download different uh, custom visuals. Most of the uh, times we go with default visuals only, okay? Because default visuals are enough. However, uh, for a few interesting charts and all, as they are not available as the default visuals, we go with custom visuals, right? There are a few things that you need to remember while downloading the custom visuals. We'll talk about that one, what are the things you need to consider before downloading any custom visuals uh, when we actually get into the subject, okay? So there we try to understand uh, the different types of charts using the buttons and bookmarks, how to navigate within the reports, right? How to uh, create a better user experience, right? Sometimes your dashboard may be showing all the accurate information, but the end users may not be finding it okay because of the different features that you have used there and the end users may not be able, you know, may not be so comfortable with those things. So it's not only about creating a beautiful and accurate report, it's also about uh, considering the user experience. If users are not happy to use the reports because of the navigations and all, you created so much confusing, right? Or the navigation buttons are not at all available every time user needs to go through 20 different pages to understand what's happening. That is not a great report, right? So what are the different techniques that we follow uh, to improve the user experience, those kind of things? And also we come up with a standard template for any business. We'll also uh, have one session on template creation wherein uh, we come up with our, our company brand color, uh, you know, brand colors template with all the navigation buttons and all, okay? So that uh, the users find it very, very easy to use our dashboards, right? It's not only just about, I'm repeating this point, creating a beautiful and accurate uh, report is not enough for real time. You will have to uh, definitely consider the user experience, how user is uh, feeling about you know, our dashboards. So we do all those things and we, we create um, interactive reports and dashboards in few clicks, okay? Um, along with uh, a, a better user experience, okay? So once that is done, then all about the slicing and dicing. Once the report is ready, usually these users are interested in, okay, I'm able to get, I'm able to see the profit numbers, sales numbers, quantity, you know, different things here. However, I want to know, in a particular region, how my sales are, right? Or I want to know uh, in a particular year, how is my profit, right? This is uh, all about uh, the slicing and dicing of your uh, dashboard. Uh, once you build the data model and keep the visuals ready, the user, the next step, the user is interested in performing those slicing, right? Slicing and filters. 
right? So there we talk about what is a slicer, filters, page level filters, report level filters, visual level filters, different filters, and how to use parameters. Users may be interested in seeing something like this. What if, what if my profit increases by 20%, how much it will be, right? So those kind of things we discuss in parameters and uh, we also manage the interactions between the objects. Uh, like, you know, if you click on a filter, something should be controlled, something shouldn't be controlled, how to manage them. Drill down and roll up actions on the charts we will see. So all these things are for uh, creating a better user experience, uh, uh, slicing and dicing and different kind of slicers that we create. Okay, so far, what all we discussed, you know, what is BI, um, how Power BI uh, is different from other tools. We discuss those points. And once that is done, we get the data, we clean the data using Power Query, which, which uses M language. And once that is done, then we build a data model with the relationships and all. Once that is done, we create the visuals along with uh, better user experience plus uh, with the capability of uh, slice or filter the data, right? But all these sounding are okay, but you you know, uh, as a business, you may not be simply looking at uh, total sales or total cost or total profit or total attrition, right? These kind of things, these are called simple measures, simple calculations or simple business metrics. But sometimes we need to come up with a very complex calculation. How that would be, I want to understand the percentage of uh, North profit as uh, uh, versus the total profit. So I just want to see only North as benchmark and what is North profit percentage out of the total profit. So these kind of calculations are not like an inbuilt, uh, you know, or a default calculation available. What is that we need to do? We need to create measures, right? Uh, if you look at any Power BI role, uh, most commonly asked thing, along with the data visualizations and all, along with that, most commonly asked is the DAX. DAX, data analysis expressions. Okay, so what are these DAX functions? Uh, you know, how to create the DAX, the different types of DAX functions available, right? All those things we discuss in the DAX, right? And uh, we start working with the DAX, understanding the DAX and how it works, the background of DAX, okay? Um, the behind the scene of the DAX, okay? When Once you write a DAX function in the front end, how it actually behaves in the background, right? We'll talk about that one. And the different types of categories are available like text, logical, aggregations, date, time, mathematical, and all. And along with that filter functions also available. So there we try to understand uh, uh, you know, last year, same period, how is the value? Year over year, how is it? Month over month, how is it? Most common, uh, you know, business metrics can be created using the DAX functions, right? And in this process, we also learn a function called calculate. We spend some good amount of time. We try at least, you know, uh, 15, 20 different types of usages, okay, of this calculate function. Very, very powerful. Uh, we'll definitely have to spend some time to understand what is calculate. The same calculate function in uh, click view, we call them as set operators. Okay, set analysis, sorry, not set operators, set analysis. So if someone has some click view experience, you can understand what is set analysis. If new also, that's okay. Um, this is anyways Power BI session and we spend time on the calculate function. This is a very versatile function. Okay, calculate what it can do, you know, it can change the way the calculation happens. All other calculations may be done in a, a particular way, but you can give an instruction to calculate command. Don't do in that way, do it in a different way, right? So we'll see that one. Uh, once you actually see this one in the action, you will uh, really love this one. And once all the DAX measures are created, now business has all the required measures on the dashboard, they can easily look at what's happening in the business or what's going to happen in the business, okay? With the help of parameters and all, what if analysis and all, we can also say, what if in future, if this thing changes, how much profit will be affected? Those kind of measures also we can create. 
Once everything is done, the next step is to publish the report. Okay. Publishing the report is nothing but we will have to um, make this report available for other users. In my business, uh, in my team, there are 20 users, right? As a Power BI developer, I create a report. The 20 users may be managers, assistant managers, team leads, department heads, and all of them may be there in that group. All of them should be able to see the report that I've developed. In the traditional reporting, what usually happens is that in Excel reporting, okay? What usually happens is that once you are done with your, uh, uh, you know, uh, report, like an Excel report, what is it you do? You open an email, you attach this Excel report and you send it to your manager. And then manager reviews it. And if it's okay, great. But if not okay, then the manager again will respond back to your email saying, so and so numbers are not looking okay, please check the data. Again, you will look into the data, you will correct the data and you will correct the formulas and you send it back. And your manager once again says that, okay, the color theme is not uh, matching, please change the color salts. Again, you will do the updates and you will uh, send that file. You see that number of iterations, right? Yeah, so that is one thing and every time you are sharing these uh, uh, reports in the form of an email. But in Power BI, we don't need to do that. What is it we do once the report is ready? We simply publish, right? We simply publish. And uh, once you publish, your manager, irrespective of the location, irrespective of the device, okay? Simply open any browser, Chrome or Edge or whatever, log on to app.powerbi.com, give the username and password. The report that is published, your manager can view that report from any place, anytime, okay? Great, so the report is ready. Your manager is able to see, you know, as soon as you publish the report here, your manager from any location can see it and will be able to perform the slice and dice, you know, filters and all that, right? Everything is good, but do I need to do this activity every day? No, you don't need to do that. Like uh, every day you don't need to develop a report, right? Once the report is developed and published, the next step is to get it refreshed every day, okay? We have something called gateway, okay? Gateway is like a bridge between uh, your data sources and publish. I mean, nothing but the Power BI service, okay? Your data sources and Power BI service can be connected using a gateway. So what will happen then, you know, you no need to create this report every day. We want to get rid of this entire, you know, traditional way of reporting. Every day, let's say, I don't know how many of you do this kind of a thing, but I'll ask you this question. How many of you, run the reports on daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. Here in this group, online participants, how many of you run the reports? Every day morning or evening, you will have to send a report, an Excel file or weekly, right? And uh, every Friday or Monday, you will have to send a, uh, an Excel file or something. You run the report, you send it using an email. Anyone in this group? Okay, so yeah, if you are not into reporting role, you may not be aware of this one, that's okay. Uh, here we go. When I was uh, into this uh, financial data analysis, right? That point in time, we used to do a lot of reporting using Excel only. Every day morning, a report needs to go around uh, nine o'clock. So what I need to do is that I need to log in around eight o'clock, gather all the data from different sources. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, just uh, reload the data into my template, in Excel template. Refresh all the pivot tables, okay? Just check whether charts are uh, reflecting the correct numbers or not. And then save the report before nine o'clock. I used to send that report to my manager. But once you implement Power BI, you don't need to do that. What you can do, you know, you set up a process with the help of a gateway. Once the gateways are ready, there is something called scheduled refresh. Every day morning, eight o'clock, I can schedule a job. What will happen, you know, once I schedule a job, every day morning, eight o'clock, the report will automatically get refreshed and that refreshed version will be available 
on Power BI service. Nothing but at nine o'clock, when your manager logs in, your manager automatically sees the most recent data that is present on the report. You don't need to manually do anything. Okay, so that is what the gateways and Power BI service uh, things they do and uh, how to view this report on the web, on the, on the mobile or on the tab. Okay, how to access uh, the service um, workspaces, right? And how you can export, export the visuals or export the dashboard into PDFs, right? All those different things. And uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about, refreshing the data sets using the gateway, no manual intervention is needed. Just set up the gateway and leave it there and it will take care, right? And there is something called manage roles. This manage roles is the one, uh, let me give you a simple example. Again, for someone who is into Excel reporting, they understand it easily. Let's say you have sales dashboard. The sales dashboard consists of all the regions like um, east, south, west, and north regions, okay? And you need to share the sales dashboard with the regional managers. The regional managers should be able to see their respective regions data only, nothing but West region manager should be able to see only West data. North regional manager should be able to see only North data. Okay, and so on. Then in Excel report, what is that you need to do? You can't share the entire sales dashboard with every regional manager. What is that you need to do? You need to get into the data. And if you are sending this report to the North manager, you need to make sure that delete other three regions like South, West and East data, delete it, save it as a North sales dashboard and send it to North manager. That's four times you will have to do this action by deleting the uh, other regions data each time, right? But in Power BI, you don't need to do that. There is something called managed ro roles as part of RLS, row level security. We set it up in such a way that if North manager opens the report, only the North data will be visible. If South manager opens, only the South data will be visible. If the business head opens the report, all four regions data will be visible. That kind of a security also we can set up in Power BI. We call it RLS, row level security. Okay. And we also create the roles. For these roles, we set up RLS, row level security. Okay. All right. So, any questions up to this point? Anyone? Sir, Power BI and Tableau are both are same or so, uh, somewhat different? Oh, good one. Power BI are the same or different? Yeah, functionality wise, they are same, but they are from different companies. They are like competitors. Okay. I'll also take you through quickly a presentation, just a second. We have done a kind of a small analysis on the different visualization tools. I'll take you through that. Okay. So business intelligence tools, uh, it's basically a software, right? Which collect and process large amounts of unstructured data from internal external sources. And it basically helps us to create the dashboards and to draw the insights and take the right decisions, right? That is what they do. There are different uh, business intelligence tools available like Tableau, Power BI, ClickView, MSBI, SAP BI, different business intelligence tools are available. 
Um, so we we looked at uh, basically these three, like Tableau, Power BI, and ClickBit. Okay. So Tableau definitely it's a great business intelligence tool, no doubt about it, and uh, has been there in the market since two thousand three, very old. Okay, compared to Power BI because Power BI came into market. Their first commercial edition released into market in 2015. Just like eight year old uh, product, but Tableau almost 20 years old. Okay. So it's a, uh, it has like Tableau desktop, server online, reader, public. Uh, this also has, this, this has an architecture like, you know, it can gather the data from different data sources. You name anything like uh, SAS or Oracle, uh, SAP HANA, Salesforce, or uh, what is it, MySQL, SQL Server, IBM, Teradata, right? Any any source, you name anything, be it a simple Excel file or a flat file like CSV, right? Access database, Hadoop, uh, you know, big data, um, whatnot, Teradata, SQL Server from Microsoft. All these things can be connected, okay, to your Tableau report, okay? And then you can publish it. And then you can make it available to the different groups, or, you know, users. Right? Tableau is from Tableau Corporation. Now, currently, it is uh, from Salesforce. Because in 2020, I think, uh, Salesforce uh, uh, acquired Tableau. Okay. Great tool, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay. But uh, I'll show you why most of the companies can't go for Tableau. The next one is Power BI. Very much similar in lines, uh, you know, in terms of uh, creating uh, these dashboards and interactive visuals and everything like Tableau has. Power BI also has all those things. Uh, this also has a similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, this one like uh, architecture wherein it can gather the data from different data sources and then publish it on to the Power BI service. And then uh, from there, uh, you can view that report in in any device, like a beta laptop, tab, or mobile, you know, you can view that one, right? Similar kind of a thing. Click view also very much same. This also uh, uses the same kind of an architecture wherein it can gather the data from the different, you know, um, sources and then it can be published onto the ClickView publisher and then it can be made available to the different uh, users. Okay, so yeah, ClickView, ClickView desktop and will be published and uh, there is a server and there are clients, different users can see them. The data sources also can be anything. It can be as simple as an Excel sheet and an SAP already database, Oracle, Teradata, DB2, Salesforce, whatnot. All these tools are uh, capable of connecting to all these common data sources. If, but if there is any additional data source, then we need to install that connector. And then so we can start using that one. Okay, all of them are uh, in the same lines, okay? They are more like competitors, okay? But which tool should I choose for my business, okay? If it is uh, a small scale and mid scale company, okay? My recommendation would be, Power BI for sure. Okay, why Power BI? Because uh, the data set size would be limited. Okay. And other thing is that the pricing, okay, is also very, very affordable. $10 per month per user. Okay. And almost it can do everything like uh, what Tableau and ClickView do, okay? Power BI also called capable of doing all these things. But compared to the other tools, this uh, Power BI tool pricing is very less, okay? Uh, these are like, uh, yeah, little outdated prices. Tableau is now around $35 per month and ClickView is still around $30 per month per user, okay? Tableau and ClickView are the ones they handle uh, lots of data, big data sets also. This is where Power BI uh, is not that great, I should say, but uh, when it comes to Power BI capacity, it, it can hold one GB data set. One GB data set is not a small one. That is also too big only. But Tableau and ClickView can go beyond that one as well. 
in power b i also we can go beyond 1 gb can go up to 10 gb using uh, a premium capacity okay uh, we also call it as on premises reporting server that is expensive that is almost like 4995 dollars per month it doesn't depend on the user count right big companies they can definitely try that one wherein uh, if, we, if they are not interested in uh, sharing their space with others they can go with a dedicated on premises uh, reporting server so why we suggest power bi these days the number of roles that are coming up power bi is uh, is there right for number of roles power bi is asked tableau and clickview are also there uh, but the usage uh, you mostly find them in the big companies can't find tableau and clickview in a very small company okay all right so this is the reason we prefer power bi because of its capabilities and the pricing the license pricing other two also yes uh, big companies you find them but small companies definitely can't afford that much you know licensing fee every month yeah got some idea now yes Yeah. Sure. Right. Any other questions, online participants? Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's try to understand the types of analytics. Okay. There are four types descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. Okay. Descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. Okay. What is descriptive analytics? Descriptive analytics talks about what's happening. What's happening in my business, right? All the Excel users, right? All the traditional report users and all uh, reporting tools users, we do a lot of descriptive analytics, right? Simply we get the data from some database and we dump the data into our reporting templates in Excel, refresh the pivot tables and all, and uh, we'll find out like what's happening in the business, right? This is easy. That is the reason if you observe here, descriptive analytics, okay? The complexity that it has, you see this one, the complexity that it has and the value that it adds is limited, only this much. Complexity is less, value also that it adds is less. Descriptive. You know, these roles are like uh, simple data analyst roles and uh, MIS executive roles or MIS analyst roles. They do a lot of descriptive analytics. Then there is something called diagnostic analytics. Why is it happening? Okay, why is it happening? So if you are good with uh, uh, descriptive analytics, figuring out why is it happening is easy. You just uh, need to drill down the data, understand, where it's going good, where it's not going good as per, as per the you know expectations and all. It's like very easy. If your descriptive analytics are good, then figuring out why is it happening is also very, very easy. Okay. So if you're uh, getting good profits, you should know why are we getting it? If you are uh, getting losses, you should know, right? Why are we getting the losses? So diagnostic analytics can help you to figure that out. In this particular training program, we'll be focusing more on descriptive and diagnostic together. Then what is this predictive and prescriptive? Predictive analytics is what's likely to happen in the future. 
Okay, what's likely to happen? Uh, for this one, just only historical data reporting is not enough. Historical data is definitely needed to find out the patterns and all. You should know how to forecast the business and also the other external factors that can influence your business also you should know. For that one, you need to have the domain expertise. Let's say if I become a, a, a predictive analyst for banking, banking company or a banking uh, banks are there, right? Something like I say, I say a bank. Then in the next six months, what's going to happen to my profits? Okay, all those things I should be able to tell or I should be able to predict today itself. For that one, historical data, trends and all definitely help. However, they are not enough. You need to have complete idea about the banking domain and other banking changes that are happening in the market. And I should study them as well. And then basis on that, I can come up with uh, a prediction that in the next six months, this is what's going to happen. This is not that easy. You need to have so much of domain knowledge and market awareness about, uh, you know, uh, market awareness so that you can become a good predictive analytics, uh, analytics guy. If your predictions are correct, then the next step is prescriptive analytics. So if your predictions are correct, then you can take the right course of action, right? So basically, prescriptive talks about what is that I need to do? What do I need to do? Let's say, as a banking predictive analyst, I'm able to see a 20% growth could, def, uh, you know, could happen in the next six months in terms of our customer base. So customers are going to increase by 20%. Currently, I have 1 lakh customers. And after six months, it's going to be 1 lakh 20,000, right? So if I need to meet that demand, right? I need to make sure my systems are upgraded, my staff is upgraded, right? Are more staff members to be added, right? So all these things, I need to do that one from today onwards. You're getting the point. So if your predictions are right, then obviously your prescriptive analytics are also mostly right, okay? So predictive analytics, what's likely to happen? Prescriptive analytics, what is that I need to do? Right, people are currently talking about recession and the layoffs and things like that because they are able to predict the future in the next six months or one year down the line. The company profits will be reduced by this much, and we may not be able to handle these many, you know, this much manpower. So what they are thinking is that okay, let us lay off like a five percent of our total staff so that salaries wise this much we can save so that we can use that one for. Uh, you know, for the upcoming uh, uh, bad times, something like that they are planning predictions, right? So as part of this training, definitely you can expect descriptive and diagnostic analytics from us, but predictive and prescriptive is on you. It depends on your domain, right? But we'll let you know what all you can do to become a predictive analyst or a, uh, the next step is to prescriptive analytics. Uh, as we go along, we'll see so many different things and there I can explain, okay? I hope we are we all are good with this one, types of data analytics, are we good? Yes. Yes. Okay. Why visualizations are important, right? You know, human mind can easily read and understand the colors and pictures but not the numbers and tables, okay? Most commonly we do these kind of mistakes as well. I'll show you simple thing here. Why visuals are needed. I see a, a data set here. Now I'm going to create uh, a very basic pivot table. Go to insert, create a pivot table, click okay. I will, uh, I want to show profit by region, okay? A simple pivot table can be created in this way, okay? Now, let me ask you this question. I will give you only five seconds time. Which region has the least profit? Time started, one, two, three, 
for Central. Yes, Western. Central has the least profit, right? That's what we found, okay, excellent. Now here's the point. Most of the times our decisions could go wrong. If you are uh, taking that decision using a table or numbers, okay? Let me prove it why. I want to convert that pivot table just now, whatever I've created, and you all said Central has got the least profit, right? Yeah, I mean, that looks like Central has got the least profit. What I'll show you is I'll show you how to create a visual, nothing but a chart using that pivot table. It's very easy, like, you know, keep the cursor on the pivot table, go to insert, you can go to any of the chart, click any of the chart, I'll give you two seconds. Which region has the least profit? Time started, one, two. Which region? South. 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 And other region? I think it's because of decimals. Correct. You look at this one, when I asked uh, which region has the least profit, right? You're looking at the length of the number and you didn't uh, actually pay attention to the decimal. This is 287,000 and this is 231,000. Just because it has got more decimals, you thought like this is a bigger number, this is a smaller number. You see that? If you really need to take a decision and you're in a hurry, right? you got like only a few seconds left to quickly take a decision. You see, the same kind of mistake everyone does, right? But with the visual, even though I gave you only two seconds, you were able to come up with the correct answer. How is it possible? Because human mind reads the colors and pictures better than the numbers and tables. So it is recommended always to visualize the data. That is what we try to do in our BI. That is what it is meant for. Yeah, so if you are presenting category, subcategory, sales and profit, like a table, it's like really difficult to understand, okay? So instead of that, if we can create a visual, then it, then it looks very much easy. That's what we will do in this uh, training. Job opportunities. Definitely a good number of uh, jobs are present. And let us try that one as well. Or we are jobs in this. Pressures, four lakh. You can easily expect four lakh because Without Power BI also, people are getting around 3.5, 3 lakh. So freshers will have more opportunities um, at, in that range, around 4 lakh range. Okay. You see this one, they're looking for 8 to 15 lakh, right? Data analyst position, six years experience in Power BI, okay? looking for tax, scorecards. These, these are the things that we actually discuss, okay? Let us take any what you saw, right? So we understand uh, the CTL process also using mQuery, right? Tax functions, you see this? And they're also looking for Power BI, Tableau, SAP. I think any of these tools, any of these tools, okay, jump back. Okay, they didn't mention the package range, right? You see the different data sources like MS Excel, CSV, TextPad, SQL servers, MySQL, Hadoop, DB2, you know, all those things. 
uh, someone uh, yeah who attended SQL Server training, you know this. You know what is OLAP. SQL guys, do you know what is OLAP? Yes, sir. It is like a data warehouse. Yeah. One more role in gen packed. PepsiCo. Yeah. So different roles are uh, available and must have exp expertise in Power BI SQL. Definitely SQL is needed. If someone has joined directly Power BI, my recommendation, next step, you need to learn SQL. A strong knowledge of excellent PowerPoint. Okay. Different things, different roles. Okay, you can also just search it online. Good number of positions are available with a, definitely a good uh, package range. So what is Power BI? This has got like uh, four different things, Power Query, Power Power, Power View, and Publish, Power BI service, right? This These things, Power Query and Power Pivot, Microsoft implemented these things in Excel first. Okay, Power Query and Power Pivot, they, they implemented in Excel. And later, they have used the same kind of things, Power Query and Power Pivot, in Power BI. Same concept. But along with that, in Power BI, we also have Power View uh, to create those interactive dashboards and all. And once the dashboard is ready, then we'll publish onto the Power BI service so that we can make it available for others. Okay. The components of Power BI, we can get the data from different data sources. Once the data is into the Power BI desktop, so basically we connect all the different data sources to build the report and we publish. And these data sources will be automatically refreshed using the Power BI gateway. This is what I spoke about. Gateways will connect to the data sources and will refresh automatically the published reports. Once the reports are refreshed, end users can directly view them either using a mobile or tab or a laptop. Okay. So we try to understand the different you know, uh, data sources and how to connect them to Power BI desktop and build a report and publish it and also set up automatic refreshes and finally make them available for the end users. These are the things that we discuss. And in the report development, these are the six stages we see. Okay, get the data from different sources. You know, there could be hundreds of sources, be it Excel or a database or a cloud based database or a spreadsheet or folders or PDF files. Your data can be needed. Okay, and once you get the data, then we'll build the data model. This is what I've uh, taken you through that uh, uh, course contents. Then we'll build the data modeling, right? We also understand the measures and calculated columns using tags data analysis expressions. These things may be sounding little new for you as on today, but once we start slowly building the reports and data models and then DAX, you will understand why DAX is needed. Once the DAX is also ready, we create the reports, visuals, interactive dashboards, okay? We create them and we set up the RLS, row level security. We discussed one point already that uh, a dashboard that may have all the region, uh, all regions data like uh, east, west, south, north, all of them. However, when the north regional manager opens that report, this report will be able to see only north data, just the north data. South manager sees only south data. That's how we can set up row level security. And then finally, we publish that report on to our BI service, okay? So that anyone can log in with the if someone uh, has a has authorization, then they can log in and they can see the report which is there on the Power BI service. 
these are the things that we are going to do okay uh, shortly a quick summary six stages we'll go through we get the data we build the data models we create the measures we prepare the reports and dashboards we set up the rls and finally we publish the antwana to power bi service right prerequisites uh, to learn uh, uh, power bi definitely basic knowledge of uh, windows operating system why windows operating system only because power bi works only with windows mac apple macbooks and all power bi is not supported because there is no development for uh, mac okay only windows operating system we have power bi and you just need to know how to use the browsers chrome or <clears throat> edge or something internet explorer is no more just edge nowadays and then uh, internet connection is needed right and then knowledge of excel formulas and sql is desirable someone who is very new to excel and uh, someone who doesn't know sql also power bi is not a tool to learn let me be very very clear about it if you are not sure about excel formulas like lookup formulas pivot tables charts and all if you are not sure and you don't even have an idea about sql if both of them are not there then i definitely wouldn't recommend this particular training for you uh, because you will definitely struggle no way that you can learn power bi easily you need to first of all focus on x then only you can understand sql concepts easily at least if you have sql concepts understanding then you can uh, understand power bi but without these two excel and uh, sql i don't recommend because you will you will have to struggle but if you are really interested to learn if others are spending half an hour you would need to spend one hour to understand the same concept okay but my assumption is that you all are uh, uh, good with definitely excel and some idea about uh, sql if sql is not there also to some extent it's okay because in the relationships time once again i'll talk about primary key foreign key and how the constraints are applied but uh, without excel i definitely don't recommend this course okay someone asked like what is power bi and tableau um, so almost everything is same uh, here it uses dax here it uses mdx this is suitable for uh, small and mid sized data sets up to 1 gb and there is no uh, such limitation any kind of a data size you can uh, load designed for the environment windows only but this can work in tableau you know this can work both in windows and mac okay yeah that's everything is very much same and uh, the other thing i would like to tell you why people find power bi is easy to learn because majority of us are excel users if you are into reporting we are into this excel right power bi interface looks very much similar to excel the terminology also very much same so i'll tell you one thing in uh, excel we call it conditional format right in power bi also we call it conditional format but in uh, let's say if i take crystal reports it says alertus you see the name alertus in click view it says visual cues visual cues you see that the terminology is different but you find most of the things very very common between excel and power bi as a result you don't find power bi as a new tool right yeah and this is a little old one however if you see the gartner quadrant hello kishore yeah uh, in power bi we need uh, sql and excel in the same way for tableau what we need tableau also excel and sql only okay see these are the basic tools needed to learn any visualization tool because tableau and power bi are like very much similar tools and like competitors right so very much same um for tableau also you need to have excel and uh, sql yeah this is the 2022 one okay microsoft is here sales for tableau is here click is here these are the latest actually yeah 
So Microsoft Power BI. Okay. I'll take you through these uh, why Power BI and all uh, from tomorrow's session. But up to this point, do you have any questions or any expectations? As part of this one, we'll uh, take you through a couple of uh, projects also. We do the practicals, I'll give you the test papers, right? And I'll also share uh, one PDF instruction file, like a client document, okay? and how to follow those things and create the required measures and all we'll see. Kishore, uh, do you provide any, like, uh, like, like you provide uh, for Excel certification course help? Mm -hmm. At the same way, like, uh, for Power BI also, it will help anything, any anything like that. Uh, right, there is something called uh, Power BI certification available. Okay, PL three hundred certification. Uh, we can take you through like the different things that are needed to attempt that certification. But in the certification, they usually cover very you know a few things that are really not needed for uh, real time, but they ask. Okay, the different things are there. Right for certification, I'll, I'll share those uh, topics as well. If you are looking for certification, you will have to invest a little more time, okay? Uh, because in this one, we'll be spending uh, in this training, we'll be spending time on different real time scenarios and uh, different data modeling concepts and all. But uh, a question comes about you know, a simple thing maybe how to check a column quality. Right. Column quality, yes, of course, we discuss, but we don't pay so much of attention to, to that one because there are different formulas we, we follow, you know, we use to check the column has a good quality data or not, right? But the question may come like that. So those kind of things are already there in some material. I'll share, I can share that one, but someone who is going for the certification, if you let us know, we'll, we'll schedule the certification as well. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. So will we uh, cover uh, data models in this part? Yes, uh, yeah, that is our uh, uh, second topic. Once we are done with the data gathering, the next topic is data modeling. The different uh, things are there in the data modeling, like how to set up the custom tables, how to create the custom sorting or number formatting, hiding the tables, hiding the columns, right? Um, so many things are there in the data modeling. What is many to many, one to many, cardinality, many to one, right? What is an active relationship? What is an inactive relationship? How to switch these relationships using calculate functions? Uh, Yep, because as it discussed, even though your data is correct, your report may be incorrect because of an incorrect data model. So we'll definitely spend some good amount of time on that one. Okay, any other? Sure. After uh, this this session, I have a very small doubt related SQL. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you make... before uh, boring this session? Please inform me. Sure. Yeah. Any others? Uh, you have any questions? I just opened a, a simple dashboard, and as part of this training, you know, we quickly create uh, a COVID cases dashboard also. Okay, so you can just simply click on refresh. Not sure whether this is uh, reconfigured with the things correctly. Oh, okay, so it is just looking at uh, a different source. So that's the reason it's throwing an error. We can fix it just a second.
Okay, so the source uh, that is pointing to a different uh, Excel file, so that's the reason it's throwing an error. Um, however, we can just change this one. You learn all these things, okay? How to change the source locations. Okay, this data is already present on uh, uh, WHO website and from there it will directly read the data and it will you see the numbers have changed and the data that I have until February 17th you see the last date that is reported February 17 total cases and total less reported across the globe if I want I can just restrict it to India see that all the metrics have changed what is the recovery rate, mortality rate, cases and everything, right? We, we create, you know, uh, different uh, things there. Map charts, combo charts, line charts, area charts, right? This is a map chart. Now China has become, what, 988, right? This one, oh, yeah. US is the first one now. And then we have China in the second position and then India. So different kind of visuals we can create, okay? Yeah, so, so how it is. Not only that, let me show you this. I'll quickly connect to this uh, WHO website data. And as we discussed, uh, this data can come from any source. I can say get data. And uh, I'll be using uh, website as uh, the source, a web page as a source. Here we have a file available, a PSV on the website, which is the COVID uh, numbers, load it. You see how easy it is, can connect to any of the sources and quickly create the reports. Just internet connection is needed for this. And I can create a map chart and I would like to see Uh, country and the total cases along with a legend like this. See these things? You can also create a line chart. Okay. You want to show the date reported and the total cases reported. We'll see what is date hierarchy and date reported. See, something went wrong here. Too many numbers. That could be from China, if I'm not wrong. If I select China, you see, so many cases reported. Yeah. And if it is India, you see, this is how it is. First wave, second wave, third wave. Not only these things, you can also, as I told you, if a visual is needed, a custom visual is needed, you can uh, go to more visuals. And uh, I like this one, animated bar chart rays. You know, th there are so many visuals, but you know, this looks uh, really interesting. Right. Let's take that visual and uh, 
ensure the country has a name, value as uh, cumulative cases in daily period is the date reported and every day how they are reported is what, is what we want to see, right? So we, we see these kind of charts everywhere uh, these days, like, uh, uh, like how the currency values have changed or, you know, how many times someone won a World Cup, right? Who is in the leading? all that stuff for a period of time period of time if you want to show you know these kind of things yeah any questions this this will run like this we'll we'll also see how we can actually download these kind of visuals how to connect with python because i can see r and p y is there Right. So for this one, uh, you need to have some uh, idea on Python as well. Um, we need to have a data set ready there and that one can be connected. I never tried the Python and the R, just that my role uh, was to directly interact with the database servers and you know then get the data. Uh, but that, that is quite possible. Yeah, this custom visual, uh, you see that we don't need to do much. All the programming and everything is done for the visual. Okay, we just need to keep those dimensions and values there. That's it, it will take care. There are so many other custom visuals also. You can just uh, go there and download it. But if you want to get more visuals, first of all, you need to have an account. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, I forgot to tell you, we'll also show you the way how to create your Power BI service free account, right? You don't need to pay for that. Uh, it's a free license only, okay? Uh, you can uh, create your free account and you can start using. We'll also learn that. Like the way we did uh, SQL Server developer edition downloading and all. Uh, it's also free. And similarly, Power BI service account is also free. You know, we can create it for free. All right. Any questions from anyone? Perfect. So do one thing. Um, we'll you will anyways get a call from us uh, for the new joiners today. Um. Yeah. We. Once you are done with your registration, we need your email address, okay, to share this entire material package. The ones who are already part of this one, you would have, I think uh, they will add your names today into the Power BI uh, group. I think it is uh, 417 is something. I'll let you know the number, okay. That group and all the communication will be done there only. Okay. Sir? Yes. When will our regular classes of Power BI will start? Tomorrow onwards. Tomorrow onwards. Yeah. Okay. Same time, sir. 730 to 9. 30 to 9. Yes. Uh, there are a couple of SQL sessions like SQL functions and uh, security related things. Two topics that we need to discuss. Functions are definitely needed for us. Mm, okay. Topics and all, they are the server administration side, but we still discuss okay, to get some idea. I'll conduct them. One, one session is on Friday. Uh, one session will be either on Sunday or Saturday. I'll let you know the class session also. Uh, Power BI sessions uh, starting from tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will have in this week. Friday, no Power BI session because I need to complete that uh, SQL pending session first. Okay, mm -hmm. so the reason I'm telling you well in advance. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Oh, you SQL server. Kishore? Yes. 
i do have sql server problem i will share screen once help me now sure yeah just unmute yourself i'll uh, make you okay oh. was to share the screen are you able to share your screen now Okay, yeah, Power BI uh, ones, you may want to drop off if you want to stay back also, it's okay. It's like, a, looks like some SQL server related issue. We'll uh, try to fix that. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, Power BI ones, you may want to drop off or otherwise you can stay, stay as well. 